I applied for the loan, hit submit on Friday afternoon, and yesterday morning, Tuesday morning, the money hit my bank account. All right, so in my previous video, I explained to you why I'm applying for an Amazon loan, and today, I'm taking you step by step by step through the application process. All righty, computer's open in front of me. I'm in Amazon Seller Central. I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest, but I'm just applying. I'm not actually committing to it at this time. And by the way, while we're here, just in case you're like, well, how do I know if Amazon's offering me money or not? On the homepage, there's a lending box. And here, very clearly, you can see how much up to they're willing to give you. Uh, and you just click on that. Uh, so you can't really miss it. They want you to see it. And so you're going to have a couple options here. Everyone's different. The very top one, Lendistry, that's not what I'm looking to do. Lendistry serves urban and rural small businesses in socially and economically distressed communities. I don't think I would fall under that. Um, there's also a line of credit being offered to me from Marcus by Goldman Sachs. I'm not looking at that. That's a conversation for another day. Down here, the Amazon Lending Program. You'll see it says up to 70K term loan expires August 24, 13.99 APR, up to 12 months, instant approval decisions are available. Let's start application. Right off the bat here, you're gonna see um, a borrow box where you can change the quantity, and then there's a drop down box for over, uh, and that's gonna be quantity or length of time. So first off, borrow, I am leaving it at 70 uh, for a variety of reasons, personally. Um, we'll get into the small print and stuff, but I know I can pay it back early at no penalty. I know I can pay back a chunk early at no penalty. I'd rather have it at my discretion and not have to wish for more or wish I took more and give it back than vice versa. That's my mentality. Okay, but I could change that as down as low as 2000 and up to 70. And by the way, after I apply, they might say, oh, change our mind. Here's 40, right? So this is just an application. And here's the drop down. There's an offering three months. Uh, if you want to do a shorter loan up to 25k six months up to 49 nine months up to 66 and 12 months up to 70 okay so that's what i'm leaving it as and then underneath that there's a bar that kind of just summarizes everything loan 70k term loan apr 13.99 percent monthly payment 62.85 12 months 75,418 dollars total amount repaid meaning that the total interest is 5,418 dollars now I do want to talk about this for a second. When I saw 13.99%, I said, that doesn't make sense that the only amount of interest paid is 5,418. So, and just so we run the numbers real quick, 70,000 times 0.14, let's call 13.9914%, okay? 70,000 times 0.14 is $9,800. That's what I thought was going to be the interest. But then as I dove deeper into this, into the fine print, which again, we're going to go over, I realized that every month, you're only paying interest on what the remaining balance is. So when you start from day one, you're paying 13.99% on 70K. Then the next month you're paying 13.99, but on uh, like 68K, or excuse me, 60, uh, like 63K. And then it goes down by 6,000 and change every single month. So as the principal goes down, your interest quantity goes down as well. And that's why over the course of a year, it drops all the way down to the 5,400 and change. Okay, just so we're clear. It's gonna now just kind of verify your business details. Obviously, I'm not gonna show that, but it's asking me my legal name, uh, corporation, state, address, primary contact, first name, last name, email address, and phone number, nothing crazy. And then so here we get to please review and confirm the information below, as you'll see here. And it's got eight numbered bullets, right? Uh, basically, you are applying for a $70,000 loan, and this is the amount of interest. Okay, total amount you have to pay back. You certify this is you. Um, one thing that I think is really important here is that it says, you acknowledge that the loan defined here is a commercial loan and is not intended for household or consumer purposes. Also, the one before that says, you certify that the business identified in this application form, the business, will use all the loan proceeds to directly support its selling business on Amazon and for no other purposes. So that means I'm not taking this money and using it to fix up my house, to put towards a different business, to buy a piece of real estate. As you noticed when I talked about earlier, if I wanna take my existing money that I have tied up in Amazon, that's one thing. But this 70K, I wouldn't touch a penny of it to do anything but my Amazon business, 
When it comes to Amazon, I am not playing around. That's a mentality I have for my everyday part of the business. But especially when it comes to this type of money, I'm, I bet they have better lawyers than me, right? Just like if you have any shady intention with this or you want to, you want money for other things, go about it a different route. They do, they, there I read that they might call you, audit you, whatever. I'm not trying to play that game, okay? And I suggest that you wouldn't do the same either. So in a nutshell, it's just telling you, you know, you're 18 years old, confirming that all of this stuff is, you understand it basically and what it can be used for. Then we get to the loan agreement. This is the fine print. I'll just kind of give you some of the bullet points that I found to be very valuable, okay? So for one, we already went over the breakdown of the loan interest rate, okay? As far as disbursements go, Amazon's gonna get their cut first. So you're gonna get your money in a payout, hits your bank account. Now, every single month, early in the month, Amazon is going to collect their share straight from your account, your Amazon account, as opposed to you getting your disbursements like you normally would, okay? They get theirs first, which makes complete sense, right? There is, an, there is a box that you can select here too, and it says it's optional. If you don't have enough funds in your Amazon seller account, they have the opportunity to take the remaining funds, remaining funds directly from your bank account. You don't have to select that, but then you also risk defaulting on a payment, which I wouldn't recommend either, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. Um, there is no penalties for paying it back early. Another reason why I kind of want to go with the max, if I pay it all back early, no, no uh, penalty, or if I just want to pay more than my monthly amount due, all of that extra goes towards principal. So whether it's 500 extra a month, if I give a chunk of 10,000, 20,000, whatever it is, there's no penalty for paying early and that goes towards your principal. Okay, and if I'm peeking down, I just don't want to forget anything. Um, oh, also I should mention from everyone that I've talked to before and based on this, my full understanding was that this is a loan that is backed by your inventory. There's no personal guarantee. There's nothing like putting up your house or your cars or whatever. I will say at the very end of this, it does say you may have to be a personal guarantor. Now you won't know until you submit the application, so I'll update you guys. I will say that might change my mentality because I don't know that I'm willing to put up my home or my car or another anything um, in the name of Amazon, and we'll talk about concerns or calculated risk at the end, but just for instance, if they deactivate my account or it gets deactivated, even if it's not my fault because things happen, I don't want them to have my inventory and then me still be on the hook to provide them with things as well. So, you know, I, I again, it's it's everyone's everyone's comfort level is different. I don't know what I would do. Hopefully we don't have to cross that bridge, but I wasn't under the impression that was even an option. So that is clearly an option. Um, so that's something to consider. And then also something definitely worth reading is definitions of what defaulting on the loan is. In addition to not paying it back, Actually, there was two of them that were really interesting, but make sense. I don't necessarily blame them, and I'll paraphrase them, but basically, your sales can't just plummet, and the amount of inventory you have can't just plummet, okay? I think what it says for both of those is they can't be, at any given time in a 30-day span, 50% less than the lowest amounts of those numbers you've had over the last 12 months. So very modest, basically, if you've kept a thousand items in stock at your lowest point over the last 12 months, you can't now have 400. And if you've sold a thousand items a month, you can't now start selling 300, okay? They're loaning you this money to make money, right? And they want to be in a position to succeed. They're not just doing you favors. So I think it's fair, I think it's reasonable, but I think it's worth noting. So that's really it. And then the application's done. You just commit, click Submit Application and we'll see what happens. All right, so I click Submit Application. It's loading here, and I have no idea what's coming next. It says, thank you for submitting your loan application as part of the application process. The loans for, from Amazon Lending, additional documents or information may be required to approve your loan. This review may take additional time to complete. You can expect a loan decision within five business days or less. We'll notify you by email about the loan status. And so that's it. So now I sit and wait, and again, if they approve me, it doesn't mean that I've taken it from my understanding, right? I have to sign documents, I would imagine, and they could come back, say no, they can lower it, so we'll see what it is. But at this point in my journey with Q4 on the horizons, for me, I think it's gonna be a no-brainer. Now I did wanna mention, just to play devil's advocate, some of the concerns. Something in general that I don't like about selling on Amazon is that 
The fact of the matter is, this is Amazon's world, right? They call the shots, they call the rules, they are a behemoth. And I'm just kind of riding their coattails and doing things by the book the right way. But it's not crazy to think that something could go wrong or they change something one day. And so I just don't like having all of my eggs in the Amazon basket. That being said, if I don't have to personally guarantee everything and I can just use my inventory as collateral, I don't really see that as much of a risk. Now getting into personal guarantee, I don't know if that's really worth it, but that's really the gist of my concern is just that, you know, you can get deactivated for, you know, you hear horror stories, right? And it's not that I think that's going to happen, but the fact of the matter is it could happen. Whereas if I got a normal business loan from a bank, I don't think I'd be up at night and I'm not gonna be up at night at this either, but worrying that something can change or a outside force like a company decides to start filing IP complaints left and right and file and hit me with 10 of them, right? You know, these, this is worst case scenario stuff and I'm not living in fear and I'm gonna do everything by the book like I always have. This is a serious business and a serious decision, but I'm also not gonna live in fear, but I'm also gonna take calculated chances, right? And so we'll see what they have to say as far as the personal guarantor. I think that's the only X factor that I would have to think about. And other than that, I'll just update you guys and, and see where we go from there. So I'll touch base in a couple of days. Alrighty, so from the time I signed off yesterday, I did the application at like, I think 5 p.m.-ish, I'm not sure exactly. I woke up this morning to an approval notice, both via email and in Amazon Seller Central, and saying that your loan has been approved for $70,000. I haven't opened it yet. I'm about to take you guys there into my screen for parts that you can see. Um, you know, a concern of mine yesterday was I didn't want to necessarily be a personal guarantor. So we're gonna find out um, what it looks like. Like we're gonna do this together. I haven't experienced this, so let's dive in. And by the way, I just got done going for like a small hike. So if I'm really sweaty, or if that does come through, that's why. And so now I'm reading and it says how it works choosing a financing option that meets your business needs. Um, and so I fill out the application, completed application can take up to five businesses. So everything we've already looked at, uh, it says application in progress for the Amazon lending loan. That's the only one that we applied for and are looking at again, 70K at 13.99 APR. To proceed, please accept your loan by August 3rd, 2022. Please contact us with any questions, okay? I am going to click accept loan. <laughs> and then I imagine I have to sign stuff so I shouldn't be as nervous. Okay, so just a pop-up appears. It says accept loan. By accepting, you are confirming that you would like to proceed with your business's loan. What if I applied for lending options from other lenders? Once you accept a loan from Amazon Lending, you will not be able to move forward with an in-progress application with Lendistry. If your business has an application for a line of credit with Marcus by Goldman Sachs, you can continue with that application after accepting a loan from Amazon Lending. You can now accept a loan from Amazon Lending and line of credit with Marcus by Goldman Sachs at the same time. So basically you can only take one loan, whether it be Lendistry and Amazon loan in conjunction with the line of credit. And even the line of credit, if I understood this correctly, you have to do that after this application. So let's just say I just took off and Q4 is coming and I wanted even more funds, I can apply for the line of credit here or outside of Amazon as well. So by clicking this, by clicking I accept, I indicate my intent to sign the loan agreement and confirm that this click shall constitute my signature. I'm gonna first click on download uh, terms here because I don't see anything about the guarantor. So that pulled me up um, like a PDF here. Name of business. So basically it's just, again, it's a PDF file going over everything yesterday. Um, use all loan present. Basically, again, certifying that I'm gonna use everything for this business, which I 100% will. Uh, late charges, repayment, basically everything that we already looked at yesterday, I'm kind of scrolling down to the guarantor thing. Oh, personal guarantee. Only if we request a guarantor for the loan. The loan agreement documentation will indicate whether there is a guarantor. 
as using this section, you means the person applying for the loan and you certify that you are an owner, sole proprietor. Okay, so it looks like at this point in time, they, I still haven't, I don't get a clear cut decision, okay? So what I'm gonna do is click that that's my intent and, um, and I accept. By the way, here's something else I'm thinking. If I really want this loan and for some reason, I made a mistake here, although I don't think I have, and let's say I do have to be a guarantor and I overlooked it somehow. Keep in mind, you can always just pay everything back in full if you don't want that pressure too, right? So I clicked, I accept. Okay. Um, application in progress. So. Um, your business's loan application has been approved and you've accepted the loan. We're in the process of dispersing the funds to your business's account. This may take up to five business days. During this time, you will not be able to proceed with application or offers from other lenders. Please contact us with any questions. So it looks like I just sit and wait within five days. I should see that money hit my Amazon account and then just take it out like any normal payment. And what I'll do is update you guys both on A, what I find out about the guarantor, I am gonna reach out about that, and B, how long it takes until I see the funds. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, so this is just a couple minutes since the last video, actually. This is happening really quickly. <laughs> um, so basically, once I click submit, I thought I was gonna have to sign more documents and whatnot, it just wasn't the case. I mean, super seamless. Um, and then I sent them an email, which I j literally just sent and I went back through the information and I do realize here under the personal guarantee section, it's in, in the bold, it says this section and all references to guarantor in this agreement is applicable only if we request a guarantor for the loan. The loan agreement documentation will indicate whether there is a guarantor. There was no documentation of that. Um, so that doesn't pertain to me. I did send off an email for peace of mind. Keep in mind, I could always just repay it back in full, but I've already got a notification that it's being dispersed to my bank account. So today is Friday, it's 5.52 PM, and I'll let you guys know when it's there. I don't know if a weekend can slow it down, but this is crazy how fast it is and how easy it is. It's almost scary, um, but I should, I should say this. It's not scary, and I think that I have a solid head on my shoulders. I would never use this money for anything that I either couldn't afford um, or for the business or within the guidelines. If it, if you can't follow the guidelines, I'm not trying to get cute with Amazon. Um, and I am. this is also really motivating me to make sure that I really hunker down and spend more each month to make it a no brainer of borrowing this money. All right, see you guys soon. All right, time for an update. So today is Wednesday, but I've been checking my bank account religiously every day. I applied for the loan, hit submit on Friday afternoon, and yesterday morning, Tuesday morning, the money hit my bank account. So like not even two full business days and the 70K was wired, all right? So I will say the only slight difference when I go into Amazon Seller Central on my computer and request a disbursement you know, every couple of days, I have to go in, click a button, and then I get a notification on my phone. As far as this, I thought I was gonna have to go into Amazon and request that money, but it was just automatically sent to me, and I did get a notification on my phone as if I did a normal disbursement. It's really motivated me. So, so now I have this big chunk of change, right? And I've already set a goal for myself for this month. I want to spend $45,000 in inventory. I created an Excel sheet because mentally, I just want to come out of the gate strong and really make sure that I make this such a no brainer, even though all the reasons I explained I think already do, but just to, to make it like, leave no shadow of a doubt, right? So I am going to use it to the best of my ability. Q4 is around the corner, and I'm just gonna really make sense of it. Uh, like I said earlier, as far as the money that I've had tied up in Amazon, I can use it towards my other business, I can use it for Amazon, whatever the case may be. It's just nice to know I have options. And I do wanna say, if I was talking to a friend if you don't know how to source properly with your own money or a budget, you're not gonna all of a sudden be able to source properly or know what you're doing when you have a lot. So just know when that day comes that Amazon offers you a loan, if they haven't already, 
have the confidence that you know what to do with it. But on the flip side, it would say you can always pay it back immediately. The same reason I took the full amount because I could pay a chunk back if I want half of it back in one shot, no penalty, all right? That's why I went for the maximum, maximum amount, just to reiterate. I wanna be honest with you, the only concern I really have, and it's not more of a concern than I've already had with Amazon, but the fact of the matter is, they make the rules, it's their game, it's their sandbox, and we're just playing in it. If they lose me, they're still a trillion dollar brand. If I lose them, I miss out on a really good opportunity and potentially a lot of inventory now, right? And so I just don't like that, but I will say I've always treated this like a business. I do things by the book to the best of my ability, but sometimes we know you can get caught up in the crossfire of Amazon sweep policies or new blanket policies. And you know, I do feel if you do things the right way, have your receipts, buy legitimate products, follow the rules, nothing's irreversible or that you, even if you got deactivated or suspended, but I kind of feel like I have more on the line now since my inventory uh, is in fact uh, collateral, right? However, on the flip side, I also think somebody who has an Amazon loan, I would imagine Amazon doesn't want to have to waste their time, money, and efforts with litigation if someone actually is doing things the right way. So I am going to do things the right way. Maybe it's a little advantageous for my account health. I really wish Amazon just said, hey, if you have this amount of this, then you get deactivated or suspended, but it's so case by case or algorithm, nobody actually knows. I'm just gonna keep doing things the right way and uh, know that everything's gonna be just fine. So anyway, that's really it. Pretty seamless process. It's more of just deciding if and when you're going to do it and how you're going to use it. I plan on making the most of this. I hope that helps clarify some things, answer some questions, and just share my journey as we continue to grow. I'm Jonathan, Duke does Amazon. Thanks for being here. Any questions, comments, topics, put them below. Have a great day. We're on Instagram as well if I didn't say that. See you guys soon.